How's it going, YouTube? It's your boy, Ron. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Leap Green. In the last episode, we head back to Viridian City to challenge Giovanni, the leader of Team Rocket, for the third time, last time, and grab our final Cancer Gym Badge. Now that Team Rocket has also been disbanded after that event, we no longer see him anymore. We are now left with the final task of heading over to the Indigo Plateau to compete in the Pokemon League. Our challenge to become the Pokemon Master is nearly coming to an end. There's just this final obstacle we have to overcome. Oh, that is the Boulder Badge. Go right ahead. So what we're now doing is now that we're finally heading over towards the League, one of the most... I like um, some minor details about this game is that this is really the only Pokemon game in the series on the remake and the original where you're going past guards as they check each badge that you have. I actually like this minor detail. It really does just tend to be a time waster in a sense just because you have to go through eight of these guards and they just inspect each badge. But it is pretty cool throughout the story to say if you got like two badges, four, five, six along the way each guard will kind of stop you at certain points just to make sure you have each sequential badge and if you don't they just don't let you pass through um i don't think any other game has done this um to my knowledge it's only just um just this and like i said it is kind of a time waster essentially it just it's really just you just going through entire patch just to get through to the gym but in my opinion it is a nice quality detail that really just emphasizes that gathering each badge is important other than just collecting all eight, and then there's one guard telling you, Oh yeah, you have all eight, go ahead. Okay, so now that we're getting through the majority of it, once we head past this last guard on our way up, I remember, I think it's this way, it'll be this gentleman right here. Now that we have gotten the Earth Badge in our last episode, now with that, we are now moments away from Victory Road. Of course, this is the path that is right before the Pokemon League. This is home to many powerful trainers that have many fully grown, fully evolved Pokemon. And this will be your test before you head over to the Elite Four. And like everything else, it's pretty much a puzzle. And I also forgot that there is also a wild Pokemon here. Did you believe that I forgot that? I, yeah, I really did. Because I'm actually very, very small like you. <laughs> so let me go ahead and put in some repels. This is also basically just like a minor puzzle as well. Just keep that in mind. Uh, I do have some repels. I know I bought some. I have about five to spare. Should be able to do it. Um... I'm obviously not going the right way. Um, oh yeah, I forgot. Um, kind of like in the Seafoam Islands, the biggest HM you're going to have to take advantage of is Strength. And pretty much what that is, once you use Strength, you're just going to have to move the boulders around to getting onto those switch platforms. And we kind of saw a little small glimpse of it as I was running over towards the east side. Um, it'll be that um, circular switch right there. You, know, you just gotta use your brain and get the switch on properly and then you'll see that clip that little small section of the rock go away and then we can continue further we can't do anything about that path and also repel isn't going to work on certain pokemon since some of them are certainly higher level but it's okay we'll still take advantage of the challenge and also keep in mind almost <laughs> if I, I wonder if you are good enough for me you gotta make sure you're good enough for me. <laughs> Little girl, that's not how it works here. Alright, so there isn't too, too many trainers here. There's about like eight or so, and a lot of them are gonna be bringing some pretty high level Pokemon. Pretty much equivalent to Giovanni's levels. Uh, somewhat also with um, Blaine, maybe less a little bit of his. And we're just gonna have to deal with them the best that we can. Almost everyone's gonna be getting some good action here just because there's a lot of typings that we can take advantage of. But I am going to have to speed through a good amount of these because not that Victory Road is long, but um, with the amount of trainers here, it will take up a majority of today's episode. Um, because I do plan on the next just the next few being the Elite Four, and then of course the final battle, the final trainer. Kind of like how I did in Pokemon Emerald. Pretty much trying to do similar to that. I forgot I already have strength. Uh, it's pretty much just a 50-50. That one's the rare candy. I forget what that item is, but you have to leave the room to access that item again. Um, I'm gonna go this way. And I forgot that train is there. But if we can leave the room and go up, then we can pretty much see what that, that item that we saw back there was. That's not a big deal. Alright, I'm just gonna let Lee take a lot of the battles for now. Um, I do want his levels to go up a little bit. His is gonna take the pretty much the most amount of time to get up. I thought it said Charmeleon. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to Horns. The Quick Claw actually worked. That messed up. 
Charizard is a great poke, but of course rock rock moves are his greatest weakness. Oh, I think he's the one with the three starters. I think he has yeah, War Turtles next. Pretty interesting how he has all three starters, but then he chooses to have Charizard. Oh yeah, I forgot. A lot of the cool trainers also have great items in terms of having healing items. That's pretty much a lot of the cool trainers in many of the Pokemon games. They will be like the only trainers to have items. Along with the rich trainer class. I forget what they are called. Something about rich trainers. Alright, luckily I don't have to use Flash in this area. Uh, but I can't go up. That's blocked off. Um, have to use strength to knock over that path. Every time I go to a new floor, of course, it'll reset the strength TM HM, so I'm gonna have to talk to it again. Always find that very interesting, but I can see why they had to do that as a choice. Alright, next path unlocked. I think it was this one. The moment I go over it is when he sees me. I'm actually upset. Alright, fighting versus fighting. Let's go. Oh, oh, that'll knock himself out. Nice. I'll take that. It'll knock himself out. That was actually pretty hilarious, I'm not gonna lie. Come on, let's just get this going. The chop, really, the chop. I'll go with three beaks. Not gonna really be too preoccupied with that right now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. Choke again. I'm not gonna deny myself of doing that. And I'll grab that item. I also just remembered too, and I just realized this now. Um, a little bit earlier when you saw me with that post between the two items that we could have obtained, um, the first, the one that we grabbed. You can ignore that. He <laughs> landed Blizzard. Nice. Um, what I was gonna say is, um, the one that we grabbed was rare, the rare candy, and the other possible item was, of course, TM2 which is going to be Dragon Claw. To my knowledge, I don't think anyone on my team can learn that. I'm still gonna grab it just in case, but I don't think anyone on my team can actually even learn that move. If I had Charizard, yeah, I could learn Dragon Claw, but no one else can. So, not exactly an opportunity I can take advantage of. Um, we really haven't seen too much of the Dragon typing, so honestly, it's not that big of a deal. In fact, only one trainer that we're gonna be approaching, you know, in the Elite Four, for those who do know who I'm talking about, um, is a Pokemon that we can actually is a type that we can actually take advantage of against their Pokemon. Um, but for now, it's really just going to be situational since we don't really come across too many trainers that will take advantage of that. But it's not really a big deal. All right, good. I was about to say, don't knock yourself out because of confusion. I just hate how I have no one that's really good against psychic types. I have um, three beaks, but that's about it. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and have three beaks out. You should be able to outspeed Kadabra. We haven't really seen too much of that as an issue for us. Rebeaks has been able to outspeed like almost everyone and it's never been a problem. I honestly don't remember if I can actually re re rematch, rematch, that's what I wanted to say. Rematch some of these trainers because they are going to be good for XP purposes. Really? Wait, do I have a Repel up? How, am I, how did I encounter a level 34 Geodude like that? Oh, that's why. <laughs> I really don't remember the speech coming up for the Repel War Off. That really kind of confused me a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Alright, there we go, I just wanted him to battle me. Come on, I'll whip you. Okay, so he's a ju no, he's the tamer, he's the tamer. Yeah, I was about to say. That sounds a little sus if he's saying that. Of course he has Persian. Alright, perfect. At least Lee's getting up to his levels. May have to switch a little bit. Hold up. Uh, I'll actually have Sore. Jolt will have his moment in a moment. Oh wait, no, there's a lot of rock types here, so maybe I should have had Jolt do that, since Sora can be handling some of the rock types that he'll find here. Because after this episode, I am going to be doing a lot of behind-the-scenes training, just because I do want almost everyone to be at least at level 50. Some of them will be able to get there pretty close after the closer to the end of today's episode, but I do want to at least get everyone at a close level. Because by the time we get out of the victory road and challenge the Elite Four, the first, the first, the, the first Elite Four member isn't going to be too different in our levels. We'll pretty much be neck and neck, maybe just like one or two down. But then after that, <laughs> we're going to notice like a big difference, like at least ten level differences. At that point, I would have to train everyone to at least 55 or above. 
it's possible it'll just take quite a while but if i end up doing it i'll might as well have to i'll have to just suck in all the training because it will take a while here honestly a lot of the pokemon here are going to be some decent levels in the wild to at least take advantage of for some xp gains but some of them are going to be pretty weak pokemon like finding a level 48 onyx that's cool and all but really get crit that yeah, only getting 740 isn't too much. It's still good, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to be, like, the most XP we'll get. Um, but I will switch. Um, I guess. Horns and Jolt are going to be the hardest to train here, just because we're, we're not going to find too many Pokemon that can take advantage of um, Alright, free item, I'll take it. I heard rumors of a child prodigy. Now, he's either talking about me, or he's talking about my rival. And I know he's not talking about my rival, because he's a dickhead. <sighs> Whether it was Horns or Lee, this was going to be a bad match for <laughs> Alright, three beats. Time for you to shine again. The Pokemon I least expected to get a lot of the a lot of the level gains in my total journey, he's actually getting like one of the most. I'm actually very surprised. Please don't have another grass type. Oyster, okay. I'll have three beats. I mean, not three beats. I'll have Joel out for that. Goodbye, sir. I also realize a lot of my Pokemon are male, with the exception of Starmie, because obviously you can't have a gender. <laughs> okay, that's pretty, pretty good. Sand Slash. Uh, sword. Just to get sure, it's gonna get a lot more battle time soon. Of course, it not spend me. Oh no, I just missed Rage Relief because I'm bad at this game. Arkin, dang, he has a lot of good pokes. Oh, but I definitely want horns for this. Oh, it has Intimidate. You suck. But Earthquake time, let's go. Well, because of that intim Intimidate, it might not knock it out. I kind of have that fear. Oh, it still did. Okay, good. This is why having Earthquake is a lot better. And Electrode. Alright, perfect. And that should definitely knock out Electrode even after an Intimidate. Electrode's defense is just as bad as Arcanine's. Oh, I had a crit. It didn't even need a crit. I already knew it was gonna knock it out. The rumors were true, so it was me. <laughs> Alright, give me my item, boy. Max Revive. Uh, we don't really use too much of these throughout our journey, but I'll still use it. I keep finding these guys. I can't escape. Fine, I'll just Earthquake it. Um, am I supposed to go this way? I think I'm supposed to go up. Trainers live to seek stronger opponents. Not if memory- dang, why do they all have so much Pokemon on their team? Like, dang, I mean, great for XP, but like, my god. Okay, uh, what I was gonna say earlier is, if you guys remember when I did my video on capturing Moltres a few episodes back, you may recall that I mentioned that Moltres used to reside at, um, Agility? <laughs> used, yes, it used to reside at Agility, no. What I meant to say is it used to reside at, um, the Victory Road. That was its former home before the remake, of course the game we're playing right now. Um, it actually resided on this floor level. Um, the trainer that we're battling now, I believe the room a little bit to the left, if I'm remembering the layout correctly. I'm assuming I'm remembering that properly. Um, that's actually where- oh, Chansey. This is gonna be hilarious. That should knock it out. Just watch the HP dip so slowly. It's just- Because of Chansey's such high HP stat, <laughs> it just goes so slow. <laughs> that's pretty funny. But a lot of XP, let's go. Um, but what I was saying is that uh, Moltres would have resided a little bit over here, if I'm remembering correctly. But I think it changed the layout a little bit because of the fact that it's no longer here anymore. Um, like I was already mentioning last time, since the Sevi Owls weren't a thing in the original game, they kind of had to put Moltres somewhere, and the only place that made sense for them to put it at the time would have been, of course, um, at Victory Road. It was like the easiest legendary to get, just because, of course, it wasn't out the way. I mean, of course, if you had to go to the Seafoam Islands, yes, it was kind of out the way. Had to go to the Power Plant, yes, kind of out the way. You're at Victory Road, you're kind of required to go there so you can challenge the um, Elite Four, so, you know, why not? <laughs> and of course, it had to be Moltres, a type um, of Pokemon that was still, of course, underrated at the time and still kind of is to this day, just because, like I've mentioned already, fire typings aren't essentially the greatest in terms of attack and especially in defense purposes. 
but enough of that. This is pretty much nearing the ending point of Victory Road. Alright, that switch, that should lead us over to the path with that lady, the cool trainer lady. Overheat, another powerful fire type move, kind of like Fire Blast. Again, we don't really have a means of using it since we don't have a fire type. In fact, only um, Horns is the only Pokemon that can actually learn fire type moves. The guard spec, don't even need that. That's pretty much useless to us. We'll battle this guy. If you can get through here, you can beat the Elite Four. <laughs> I think this is the only guy that isn't a cool trainer that we see here. Well, there was also the Tamer and a couple other people, but most of the people here will be like the cool trainer um, classes. That might knock me out. I was about to get a level up too. Dang it. <sighs> kind of figured, but that's okay. At least Shuriken will get some levels. Lapras. Definitely want Joel. I need him to get to at least level 50 as quick as I can. That should knock out Lapras, especially at level 40. Alright, you're good. <laughs> oh, and Lickitung. Alright, this is only the second time we've seen it. Back at the power plant was our first encounter. And I don't know, I got Lickitung. Alright, perfectly good. And now we can get our XP and get out of here. Unbelievable. Shut up. Let's head back up. Let's head to the proper path. I, I don't know a lot of the items that spawn here, so seeing guard spec was kind of annoying. Don't really care for that item, it's not even good. I think these are the last two. Um, there's still one more trainer after these two. Let me actually get horns back up. Because I believe he could still be pretty useful. Um, healing items, I'm really too worried about being low on those. I have enough of these to spare. I do want to use my full heal, just in case I need to use three beaks, and let's go ahead. Only the Chosen can pass here. And by that, he means pretty much anyone that can beat him. And of course, it's Kingler. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't even contain my my sadness for that, the fact that it was Kingler. <laughs> Alright, good, we knocked him out. Let's go. One thing I do kind of... Or one thing I am going to be upset about is that um, Horn Candler and Mega Horn, which is the most powerful bug type move in the game, even as of right now, um, only issue is he doesn't learn that until like level 60-ish, like level 58 I think. And yeah, we're not we're not gonna train him all the way to that just to give him Mega Horn. Um while it is a great move, he does move last, and a lot of the second types he would potentially be better against are gonna get he is gonna get outsped by them. And since Horns can't handle special type moves, it most likely will be a waste regardless. And it is only an 85% accuracy. That's um, something I'm just gonna have to live without. It's unfortunate, but what can you do? Cedra, a lot of water types. Very easy XP for Joel. It's gonna be easier than have oh Blastoise. Yo, that's crazy. But it's gonna be a lot easier for Joel to get these XPs on trains than it will be on the wild Pokemon battles that we'll see here. See that's how you know Shockwave isn't good. Use Rain Dance. Guaranteed Thunder, let's go. Oh, that's okay to use Hyper Potion. This Thunder will knock it out 100 percent accuracy with that nasty power stab. If it was even level 50, it probably wouldn't even survive this. Eh, maybe it would have just survived it, possibly. I don't believe it. Well, too bad, bro. You were pretty bad. <laughs> I'll show you just how good you are. Nah! Dang, bro. You gotta be like 10 years old to say all that. Not like something I would say. Dang, everyone has five Pokemon here. Like, that's crazy. Of course it's boss, bro. I think she's also the trainer with only grass type Pokemon. Kind of pisses me off a little bit. Just gonna have to speed through this, hoping for the best. Never mind, couldn't hope for the best. But it is, and also a poison type, so I'll go ahead. The paralysis was really not in my favor, but of course I had to use freaking. Paris. Bugging Grass. So Psychic is going to do that super effective damage. Last one is Parasect. Does it know Giga Drain? 
I could use horns, but if it knows Giga Drain, then I am done. It outsped it. Alright, quick claw helped. That helped. I don't think I should be naturally faster than Parasect. Caroline, you little sh <laughs> You and your grass type Pokemon. Alright, I believe we are oh there's a double battle near the end. I didn't even realize that. Okay. We are nearing up on time, but honestly we are nearing towards the end, so I'm not really too concerned with that. Can't go that way, and then that's the exit route, so I'm gonna force the drop down here. I think I had to take this rock over to this side, don't I? Yeah, yeah, okay. It's a Marowak. Are you kidding me? Alright, let me just get through this battle real quick. I was about to lose to a Marowak. A wild Marowak. Alright. Just want to get through this. Because I know there's three more trainers left. There's that double battle that we saw right over there just before I dropped down to put this boulder. And then there will be one more trainer. At least I think that was the last trainer. And we'll see in just a moment once I unlock this last path. There we go. Uh... We're trying to become champions together. Oh, isn't that nice? Okay, I forgot. I can't use Earthquake here because it's gonna not. It's probably gonna knock out. All right, I'll do it. I'll, I'll still do it. It outspent because of the quick claw. All right, please do me a favor. Do not knock out Shuriken, please. Dang, it knocked out Needle Queen though. That's crazy. Yeah, the anti-climatic pause. Sorry, Shuriken, but you still did great. <laughs> oh, but... That was pretty cool. Alright, this should be one more trainer, right? Yep, this is the last guy. Oh no, you should be proud of yourself, having battled your way through Victory Road so courageously. In recognition of your feat, I'll teach you Double Edge. Would you like me to teach you that technique? Ah, uh, no, I'm good. I'll teach you that technique anytime. Alright, so never mind, he's not a trainer, he's just someone that'll teach you in <laughs> that last step too. He's just someone that'll teach you double edge. Very powerful, normal type move, but does take recoil damage. You're not gonna worry about that, because now that that is done, this is the last quote unquote puzzle. Because after we. someone can solve it, I can't solve it. We are just steps away from the Pokemon League, right over here, guys. We have now made it to the Indigo Plateau, and we are just moments away from challenging the Elite Four. But like I mentioned, I will be doing some behind the scenes training, because my Pokemon are just slightly under leveled than what I would like them to be. So I'll be going ahead and doing that. And then I'll be meeting you guys back here in the next episode. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I do hope you enjoyed. Majorly today, we of course just went through Victory Road. We challenged a lot of trainers, but of course everyone did get some decent level ups and of course are closer to level ups. Hopefully by the next time you guys see me, I will at least have them all by 50. Um, it won't take too long for certain, for some, but for others it might take just a little bit longer. But the goal is to at least get them to that, so that way at least when we challenge the Elite Four, since of course like in Emerald, it is going to be continuously one by one for all four of them. And with very high level and very natural pokes, we're just going to have to make sure we are well prepared. But I will be doing that behind the scenes and we, everything will be ready for next time. So guys, this has been your boy Ron, and until next time, I'll see you guys back here outside the doors of the Indigo Plateau. So we can go ahead and commence our Elite Four challenge because we are nearly done with our journey in Kanto. I'll see you guys then. Take care.